My name is Grace Doremus, and I'm the Director of Strategic Initiatives at 100 Canton. Thank you so much to Susan and to Mariette and to everyone at Scientific American and at uh, Macmillan for having us here today. Yesterday was really wonderful, and I'm so excited to uh, get started today. I'm also really excited to share with you all what we've been up to recently at 100 Canton. This summer, we launched in beta the grand challenges to getting and keeping great STEM teachers. Backed by over two years of research, the Grand Challenges is a system map of the underlying causes of the STEM teacher shortage. It is an unprecedented analysis of the core issues we face as a STEM education field and a critical tool for charting our course forward. I'm excited to tell you today about how we worked with thousands of stakeholders to develop it and what we learned through that process. But before I do that, I'm going to quickly wind back the clock to 2011 to share a little bit about who 100 Canton is for those of you who are less familiar with our work. In 2011, during his State of the Union address, President Obama made a very public call for 100,000 more science, technology, engineering, and math teachers over a decade. Thousands of people applauded. There was actually even a standing ovation there in the room. The path forward, though, was not clear. What was clear was that this was not a problem that was going to be solved by any single entity, whether it be a foundation, one of our nation's top teacher training organizations, a university, or even the government. Recognizing this, our founder and current executive director, Talia Milgram Elcott, who was then a program officer at the Carnegie Corporation of New York, brought together several of the country's leading institutions in STEM and in education to think about how to solve this problem. A few months later, 100 Canton was born with 28 founding partner organizations making bold commitments to address the 100,000 STEM teacher need. Fast forward to 2016. 100 Canton has grown into a robust network of more than 280 partner organizations, each making a unique commitment that contributes to the 100,000 goal. Our network is diverse, spanning many sectors as you can see here and touching almost every state in the nation. Many of the nation's top STEM and education institutions are our partners, and several of them are here in the room with us today. American Museum of Natural History, Bank Street College of Education, the Center for K-12 STEM Education at NYU Tandon School of Engineering, Chevron, Digital Promise, Drexel University, Google, National Geographic Educational Society, National Science Teachers Association, New York Academy of Sciences, New York Hall of Science, Project Lead the Way, UCLA California Teach, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and WGBH. We've also made a lot of progress together. We've built a strong network grounded in a shared vision. Our partners work together to solve some of the biggest problems they face in their day-to-day -day work and that face the education field using a classic problem-solving solve cycle, learning together, sharing what does and doesn't work, and ideating and implementing solutions collaboratively. We recently heard from our partners about how they've engaged in the network. Nearly 90% report having built relationships, over 80% learned something new through the network, and nearly half have reported that they have impacted their programmatic work through the work with the network helping them to modify an existing program, designing a new one, or adapting another partner's best practice or program. And last year in May of 2016, we were excited to announce that we're on track to meet, meet the 100,000 STEM teacher goal on time. But despite this progress, there was a quiet nag that grew stronger throughout the years. We're training more great STEM teachers, and we're doing so in better ways. And we're supporting our teachers who are already in the classroom to improve their practice and to stay there longer. If, and when we believe when, we reach that 10-year goal in 2021, we could throw a big party like the one here. We can replace our website with a big check mark, and we can kick back our feet because our work would be done. But would it? Would we have gotten at any of the underlying issues that created the need for the 100,000 teachers in the first place? Or will we have just scratched at the surface, supporting and enabling what is undoubtedly really great work to get even better? So we asked ourselves, what would it look like to really change how STEM is experienced in schools and classrooms around the country? So we set out on a journey to answer a big question. 
Why is it so hard to get and keep great teachers, especially in STEM? Over two years, using interviews, surveys, and a variety of workshops with all kinds of stakeholders, STEM teachers, principals, STEM industry leaders, university deans, and so many others, we together identified about 100 root causes, such as families' per perceptions of STEM teaching, how universities and districts collaborate around teacher preparation, and the access STEM teachers have to current STEM content and STEM industry experts. We then organized these into seven overarching themes. You can see those here. We called it the challenge tree. Those seven themes are the prestige of STEM teaching, the preparation of STEM teachers, the preparation and support in STEM specifically for elementary teachers, quality and meaningful professional development, teacher leadership and autonomy, the value of science, technology, and engineering in our schools, and access to quality resources and material. This was great. And from all perspectives, we saw heads nodding in verbal agreement. Yes, these were the problems that we were facing. But how is this tree helping us to take action? How would it help us chart our course forward? We realized that we needed more than just categories. We needed a map. We began by investigating system mapping approaches, but found ourselves learning about starfish. To explain, let me share a quick story about Macaw Bay in Washington State. In the tide pools along the shore, you'll find all kinds of creatures, like mussels, barnacles, sponges, and algae. And although most of them seem harmless, one of them can actually get quite aggressive, the mussel. Ecologists found that in some of the tide pools, the mussel populations were rapidly expanding, resulting in the decline of the other populations and the destruction of the natural order. Why was this happening? After studying the tide pools, it became clear that the mussels were actually not to blame. It wasn't their fault that they were reproducing at extreme rates and thus needed more food. What the scientists learned was that the mussel's only predator was actually the one to blame. That was a seemingly innocent starfish. The starfish was the one who was actually responsible for keeping the system in order. Without it, nobody ate the mussels, and the mussel population exploded. Everything went into disarray. Here we call the starfish the keystone species. By this we mean that the starfish is the species with the most leverage over its system the one that has the greatest downstream impact and thus is a key place to intervene when controlling the other populations. We learned this concept from an ecologist and a network data scientist who are taking the laws of natural systems and applying them to big social issues. We realized that finding our starfish was key to mapping our system. Thus, alongside our ecologist and network friend, we designed a game that identified the relationships between our 100 individual root causes. If A improves, does B improve, get worse, or stay the same? We put this game out to the field, and we collected over 22,000 data points from nearly 600 respondents. This approach to systems mapping allowed us to do something that we think is really key to progress. Through it, we were not able to just collect thousands of data points, but also to synthesize them into learnings that were not based on the opinions of 20 experts sitting in a room, but instead on the knowledge of hundreds of stakeholders working all across the system. With this approach, we remove the politics, the biases, and the preferences that so often haunt our conversations about how to make an impact in education. So what did we learn, you likely want to know? Well, first, we learned that just like in natural systems, all parts of our system are connected. But everything is not equally connected. And just like the tide pools in Macaw Bay, our system does have a starfish. Some points do have greater influence over the system because they are affected by fewer points, but impact many. These points are our keystone species, our starfish, per se. Our starfish has six arms. In other words, the analysis of the 22,000 plus data points led us to six challenges with the greatest influence over the system. You can see those here. One is financial in nature, scholarships and loan forgiveness for teachers. Three have to do with culture, accountability for creativity in the classroom, not just rote memorization. 
the time to collaborate during the school day for teachers, and the time for teachers to participate in professional development. Two, relate to resources and materials. A high quality computer science curriculum and the need for strong state science standards. So now, not only do we know the root causes of the STEM teacher shortage, but we've also identified how they are connected and which are key places to intervene. But here's the thing. This six appendage starfish, it has room to grow a seventh arm, lose two, or maybe take an entirely different shape. And here's why. This is science. And I know I'm speaking to the crowd here, but science is neither fact nor its truth. These findings represent the best possible hypothesis that we have, given the data and given the inherent uncertainties in any scientific process. And as we continue to learn more about the system, gather more data, and hopefully make inroads against these challenges, the data will shift, some answers will change, and our map will likely look different. We launched the grand challenges in beta knowing there's so much left to find out. We didn't want to hold on to the data until it was perfect. Systems are constantly evolving, and systems maps will never be perfect. We're still gathering data through the game to learn more about our starfish and our system, so please do go and play the game. You can see the website on the screen here and contribute your knowledge. But we also set out on this journey knowing that we aren't a think tank, aiming to put out a report and then see how others would use it. We are a network, and we wanted to do something about these challenges. We're already working with our partners and others to take up these findings in actionable and meaningful ways. Actually, about 70% of our partners have told us that they have already started working on these challenges, and that that is something that they could not have done alone. But this is just the beginning, and we're often reminded of one of our core founding ideals. Nobody can go at this alone. We need all kinds of players working in unique and coordinated ways to move the needle against these challenges. And the great thing is, there are so many ways you can get involved and be a part of the solution. That's actually one of my favorite parts about the Grand Challenges. It's a bit like the phenomenon of illusions. This one was my favorite as a child. Humor me and let's do a quick poll. Raise your hand if you see an old woman. Okay, raise your hand if you see a young woman wearing a feathered hat. More people tend to see the young woman, but as you might have guessed, the answer is they're both there. Just like this illusion, our grand challenges do not come to life in just one way. Your perspective, experiences, and goals shape what you see, whether you see the old woman or the young one. So you may see different things in the grand challenges, and no matter your perspective, we want you on board. If you're focused on research, thought leadership, or knowledge generation, we need you to help surface the most promising emerging practices and help us identify the most current research on these issues, and then help us bridge the gap between research and practice. If you're thinking about policy or advocacy or government engagement, we need you to help identify the policies that are prime for intervention. If you're thinking about measurement or evaluation, we need you to help figure out how and where we're moving the needle against the challenges. And if you're running a program, we need you to find new collaborators to figure out how you can get closer to the core of these challenges. And then think about how maybe you could contribute to the Starfish. These are just a few ideas. There are endless possibilities in the grand challenges. We're just on the cusp of this work now. And over the months and the years to come, we're eager to see the shape that it will take and the progress that we can make together. No matter what you're seeing now, join us. We want and need you to contribute to changing how students and teachers will experience STEM in future generations. Thanks.